What do you call yours? White. <laughs> and your? Silver. Silver. And we'll probably start, when we get into the QETP this year with your teams, using beginner, intermediate, advanced, because that the skills are grouped that way. And it's a natural way for you to test progress of a skater and how to move them from group to group, too. So I spent, after driving to Army Guy, I spent like several hours last night watching your ice shows. I have a little perspective on some of the stuff I saw. You seen Michelin? Was it you? Was it you? Was it you? Was it you? Two years ago? Yeah, I saw you. And then I saw yours the year before. I didn't have this one. I didn't have that once for one of that one. So, Bill? So, uh, I'm is he ready? Right. Did, do you know if he's... Is he taping that? Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, he is, he's going already? I think so. I just, I didn't know. I sort of asked him. That was disjointed, so... Yeah, it's going. Okay, well, it's going. Then we're going to start. <laughs> um, so, one of the things, there's two really big things I want to cover, and then I want anything that you talk about. One is the process of natural sequence of movement with any skater who's really capable of it. Now, obviously, we deal with the whole range. You do, too. You're going to have people who um, maybe are always going to have a really hard time with one leg or the other because of a gait or, or a cerebral palsy that's, you know, hemispheric or maybe an accident. So there's, that's one piece of it. And the other is the skill piece. And your job also as teachers is to sort of keep the, the whole group, you know, moving, you know. And, and obviously your volunteers are great because you have a whole bunch of them, but the hard part is you get new ones every year. Like we have volunteers that have been with me some 15, some 20 years, so they can become like a mentor to the new people coming in. So that's a bit of a challenge. So we're going to talk about that. So let's start with the instructor training piece. And one of the most important things and that's the reason I tell you like how old I am and how long I've been doing this because it's probably like 25,000 students I've personally taught over that time span. <laughs> and one of the big um, pieces is goal setting and achievement. So this is this is where I'm at right here. Um, at Gliding Stars, we want to have goal setting and achievement, high and continually expanding expectations, consistently increasing the confidence. Physical improvement, friendship, and mutual respect. In what? Nurturing, fun, and a warm environment. Because if you create the, the space that feels safe and feels warm, then people can, can grow and excel in there. Um, when we come to the rink, we got to leave our problems behind, right? <clears throat> and one of the most important things I've learned over, over the years is nobody knows what's really possible. So you have to believe anything is. And our job as the visionary teachers and leaders in the organization is to hold that bar high and then have the skaters come up and meet it. And in one of my new chapters, they, uh, the teacher said, the lead of the first years, oh, well, we tried that. They couldn't do it. I said, well, they should never be able to do it the first time you try a skating routine thing. And she looked at me like, huh? I'm like, no, you should never, they should never be able to do it. If we're doing skill in the fall and then we're starting ice show, you know, rehearsal dynamics like in January, which is about this normal progression of the season, you know, they ne my kids can never do it in January or February. That's the point, is that they're striving every week to get better and better and better at the pinwheel or the circle or the line or their individual trick or whatever it might be. So that at the show, they're doing the best they ever did. There's this huge stretch going on. And that's one thing I noticed that I felt was a little weak when I looked at your um, your videos. So I think that's something that we could focus on, you know, and give you, I brought you some tools, you know, to help you with that. I brought you choreography sheets from the whole show. I brought you the video of a show so you can borrow any idea you like at all and integrate it. <laughs> you know, I go back sometimes through 10 years ago choreography and go, oh, I haven't done that in a while. That was really cool when we did a circle with a, with a pinwheel coming off of it and it looked like the sun rotating on the ice. I'm like, I haven't tried that again, you know, and so you just, you know, you just constantly think of things. I go to, I go to shows that are like Broadway type shows and I look at the choreography and I like find an idea there. I watch something on TV and I'm like, oh, I'll find an idea there. So that's, that's the concept. If we don't know what's possible and we believe anything is, then we're surprised too. And we're having that joy and that great excitement 
about seeing somebody achieve something that even though I'm like the most eternal optimist in the world, you know, it surprises me sometimes. And that's really fun. That keeps it fresh. That makes everybody want to come to the rink and see. And you know what it feels like when somebody like glides on one foot for the first time or whatever, like, oh my gosh, you know, that's so exciting. <clears throat> and the other real reason is why. And uh, Cindy told me she's been having a hard time with she, what she feels the teacher's getting off the walkers too soon. And I saw a lot of kids being dragged around in that video. And I saw them not skating. And I would far prefer a person on a walker skating on their own without the person even holding them. So that's one thing I'm going to tell you right off the bat. I saw way too much of that. And uh, the kids pushing with only one leg, <clears throat> put them on the walker, get both legs working. You know, work with them off the ice marching. So the reason is not just, okay, the volunteers like holding their hands, doing skating with the kids, I get that. The real reason is the way I've seen lives change. Change. You're all in your 20s, right? Um, I'm turning 19. Okay, you're a baby, even younger. You're 19 too? Okay. I'm 17. You're 17, oh my god, okay. So you're like in your 10 to 17 and you're 20 to 30, you're in your 20s? No. Nobody is, you're all babies. Okay. So if you look back on your life, you're going to find, even at this age, something that happened at 3, 4, 5 that was huge. It was like a huge turning point where all of a sudden something happened to you or you learned something or you had some experience with somebody and your life went at this turning point. You're going along, deep, 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 turning point, completely different trajectory. You might have gone over here. Here, you might have gone over there, you might have gone over there, but something happened there. I want you to be that point for your skaters. I want you to be that point of turning point in their lives because true confidence is what changes lives. I could say to you all day long, you nice young people, younger than I thought, even, you know, like, have confidence. I'm the confidence fairy. I'm going to like whack you in the head with my confidence fairy whip. It doesn't work. With normal people, even more so with people who've been challenged by disabilities because they've been told they can't, they've been excluded from things. If they have a physical issue with mobility, they're excluded from physical spaces. What does school feel like? Okay, it's a lot better than it was, believe me, when I started in 1976 and people lived in institutional you know, settings off in the woods. Or, you know, it's a lot better than my time frame. But it's still hard. There's still that sense of isolation. There's still that sense of exclusion. So what I wrote here is true confidence changes lives. It teaches us to overcome fear and live a richer, fuller life. There will be so many things that you will be afraid of in your life. Do it anyway. Do it afraid. Because then your experience like this becomes here. My life was this big. Something really scared me, but I like stretched. And it was over here, and I tried to do it. And it's like an amoeba, you know? And then all of a sudden, you became more. <clears throat> and then something else over here stretches you. Something else over here stretches you. Something else over here really stretches you. And you become more. And so what happens? Your life is bigger. So we want to be that person that helps make these skaters' lives bigger. And that only comes when they do it themselves. Now, anybody a skater here? What was it like to learn the first post jump? Loop, oh. axle, right? What did it feel like? How many times did you fall? Oh. Okay, <laughs> right. But if we, we wouldn't have to fundraise if each of us had a penny for every time we fell. As we trained as a skater, we could fund programs all across the world. What was it like to like leap into the air on that axle? You know, sometimes the back edges are easier, right? Right. I used to actually do some triples like way back in my twenties, so, and falling on those that really hurts. <laughs> so, what? Are, think about those lessons that made you more, right? We want to give that to these kids because if you have a volunteer that's dragging a kid around, they are not helping him, they are hurting him. They are making that child still feel helpless, not proud, and excluded again in another way because they're not participating. I want to see your show this year where people are skating independently, not holding anybody's hand, except in the places where you choreograph it and you want them to hold hands, and you want a nice big circle, or you want a pinwheel, but then we want single file lines, you know, where they're skating, really skating. I love the parts where they're going by the families and waving and stuff, you know, there's some really great stuff in your shows, so please hear that, 
you know, too. There's a lot of really great stuff, but there's some real room for improvement on this piece of it. And you've had kids on the ice for like 15 years. I just think you should have some better skaters, you know, at this point. There was one kid two years ago when you did the anthem. And he was dancing in one of the, was it the rock and roll Elvis show? Was that two years ago? No, it was the Findlay. Yeah. Which was before. It was rock and roll earlier than the 20, than the 200th anniversary of Findlay? Yeah. yeah rock and roll was. So I think I watched rock and roll second. But this kid was like bebopping around, dancing to some music. And I'm like, that kid could do a solo. I could see it in him. I could see the confidence on the ice, you know, that, that he could do a solo. So I wanted to spend a little time on that, that true confidence comes from actually achieving something, not being helped by someone else. And that's going to be hard with the new volunteer helper that might work because that person needs to understand this as well. And a lot of times I'll say to the volunteers, too much help is a hindrance. And help verbally, give them pride, give them feedback, but don't hold them. There's a lot of people being pushed around on that, but those kids keep moving, they could have gone. So they go a little slower. So what? My slow video, when you see my, my beginner group, which I probably had, and the more involved people too, you know, the specialty walkers, you know, the more involved, the sling seats, the bar walkers. I probably had 30 skaters, stars, and maybe 60 volunteers on the ice during that routine. And at one place, the volunteers leave the stars right in the middle of the ice and facing the audience and facing the camera. We have each one, their name is called, and they do their best individual trick. And there's a few of them who are so severe that the volunteer needs to be with them, but 90% of them do it alone. And you'll see that on the video I brought you. That would be such a cool thing. The families would get so together. It would be so exciting to hear not just their name announced at the beginning, but your name as you're doing it, you know, as you're skating, your family seeing you know, the whole thing. So. Um, some of these things are volunteer responsibilities, which would just be helpful for you as an overview, you know, to read. And then, you know, Cindy, uh, Brad, there's a lot of people who can back you up if you've got a problem with a volunteer, uh, you know, doing something, you know, inappropriate. Um, I like to try to get the kids to be able to untie their skates first, because it's a lot easier to untie than to tie. And that's another sort of independent skill. We have a button thing where the skaters come and find their own button, so it's identification, you know, when they're talking with people and communicating. We have a little room for the skates where they go up and they have to talk to the skate person if they're verbal, you know, and get their own skates. So all of that really helps. Um, to truly be a helper, you need to give them the opportunity to learn to do it by themselves. So I like independent skating, whether it's on a walker or completely independently, and I don't like the stuff in between. I have people in my advanced group and in my intermediate that are on walkers. One girl who started with me when she was eight, she has pretty severe cerebral palsy, and her legs are kind of, um, they're kind of torqued that way, you know, when she walks, right? So she's been in PT, you know, her whole life. She just graduated from college with a bookkeeping degree, so she's probably 22, is not right now, 23. And um, no one would hire her, partially. You know, she wouldn't have to interview after interview after interview. And we had made a change in the office, so I skated up to her one day in the ice and said, would you like to be our part-time account bookkeeper? And she's like, yes. And her mother was like, you have to negotiate. I said, no, we're a nonprofit. We can start you at $11 an hour. There's not really a negotiation here. This is a yes or no. Here's the offer. So she's coming to the office. She's our bookkeeper accountant. She's getting through the first audit. She works, you know, two to th three days a week, and we had to accommodate the office and so we'll put certain rugs in and some rails and, you know, some things, you know, that made it better. But it's been amazing. And here she is, a skater who's been with us since she was eight. She's 22. Well, she's on a walker because of the dynamics. But she's in the intermediate group because she does well enough on that walker to be intermediate. She'll never get off the walker. She uses crutches every single day unless they get radically better with some medical treatment, you know what I mean, that would enable her spasticity to change and, and the foot to track straighter and you know things like that. But she has she's in the <coughs> AFO skates. She's you know obviously this she has she could walk for a certain distance. She has a scooter when she needs longer distance. But that's she's still the best she can be. So it's that process of letting people rise to their highest space. 
and now she's putting a little PowerPoint together and she's going to go out and do talks about, you know, like when she, when she was in the eight, when eight was shown that she was eight and when she was nine and when she was ten. And, we, and her mother asked if we could put a picture, an image of a skater on a walker on her poster this year. And I said, that's a great idea. And I just like, you can't be a little skater, but skater on a walker too. So, you know, sometimes you do things like that for someone and then they educate you in another way that's really sweet and really powerful. So, um, with the volunteers, we try to say, leave your problems outside, you know, focus on what's going on in the rink when you're here, keep the skaters' feelings in mind, keep personal information about them confidential, and then they may imitate your behavior, so please make sure it's positive. Very often, I get a new volunteer, they sit on the boards on the edge of the ice dangling their feet, and I'm like, we don't do that here. How would you like it if your kid followed you and copied you and fell over and like smashed their head? You'd feel terrible for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know? Like, really, please get off the free boards <laughs> and, and behave. Right? So that's a big thing. Um, rather than sympathize or pity, try to understand the challenges your skater faces and help them move beyond them. Uh, and then where it was on the ice is a big deal for instructors. The other thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is making sure that falling happens every single week in the program on purpose. Okay, we're all in a circle. We're all going to get down. We're all going to get down on the ice, all the way down, all the way down. Okay, are we fine? Is some of them, eventually the advanced, your advanced? Yeah, advanced. We teach uh, polar bear dives, sliding on our belly, and we also teach we also teach getting down really low, and popping their feet out, and sliding on the right hip, the left hip, and the butt, but keeping the head up. I actually hurt my back carrying the equipment yesterday, so I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> but we, one of the boys with autism, Jackson Dallas, mom told me he was all freaked out because he fell once. Well, that means you're not teaching falling enough. We make our kids fall every single week toward the end. So if they get really icy and snowy, right? And I don't care if they're screaming or crying, I'll take their hand. Come here, give me my example. Here's my kid. She's, well, he's video, right? We're screaming, we're crying. Hello, hello, we're going down, here we are. It's okay, we're going, she's screaming. We're going down, we're going down, we're going down. And then we sit there and go, you see, we're fine. It's okay, we're fine. And sometimes I'll grab them by the blades and swing them around sliding on their body. And I always get them to laugh, like we're fine. But if you're all down as a group, Every volunteer, every star, you're all down. And then yours getting up, hands and knees. And you, sometimes you gotta roll them over to their hands and knees. One foot up, okay, other foot up. And I'll help like under the arm. You know, you give a little bit of help if they need it. But by mid-season, every single skater should be able to get up for themselves. And guess what? That's core body strength. It's coordination. It's balance. I mean, this is really important stuff like over here. Because why, why are we doing this? Thank you, I'll use your again, I'm sure. Why are we doing this? Because we want this turning point to make another life. I have families who come back to me in one season of skating. My son was always terrified of walking in the winter. He could, he fell all the time. He would have horrible crash and burns downstairs, you know, down a flight of stairs this way. One season of skating, she said we went caroling and he went running at full speed over the icy pitted sidewalk from house to house to house. Okay, so it wasn't just at the rink, it was over there in his life he was doing better. And those are the things that when you're doing, doing this as long as I have, you get to see those reflected back to you. My, they told my daughter she'd never ride a bike, she's riding a bike this summer. Last year after one season of skating, she could do it with the training wheels, this year she's off the training wheels. Then she's not the weird kid on the block that's the only one who can't ride the bike. So that's what's really, to me, can you tell why I'm still doing this? That's what gets me excited, because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so much fun to do that here, to make them like little amoebas, you know, like doing something else. My daughter was so terrified, but after being in two ice shows, she stepped up and she auditioned for the school play and she got in it. She got the third lead. You know, the shy kid who never said anything. But why? Warm, safe, nurturing environment room to grow, growing beyond your expectations of who you are, true confidence, true, real confidence. Works with normal people too. One of my dear friends who's like a spare daughter, I've been friends with the mom since I was about your age, like 14, 15, 16, every kid called me their spare mother, which I was pretty much. I was the babysitter, I was there for Christmas, they were at my house, whatever. She was terrified of cooking. 
and she was going to babysit my house when my dog supply was gone. I said, I bought all the ingredients to make these great rosemary orange muffins and two or three other things, whatever it was, and she had this deer in the head. Said, Look at me. I said, all the ingredients are here. You're all alone. you got this great big kitchen. Go for it. Worst case scenario, we'll put them in the composter if they turn out terrible and they'll turn into dirt, and I'll grow vegetables with them next year. And she told me later it was like the best thing I ever could have said, that there was a back door. Like, they're going to just turn into dirt. It's fine. They'll go back into Mother Earth. <laughs> we'll make vegetables out of them. She made those, she gave the muffins to her boyfriend. She gave some to her family. She brought some to the neighbor. Like she was so, that chick, that was a tipping point for her in terms of being able, you know, to, to cook. It's, so that's, and then, then something like that will happen. I'm telling you all this and then you're gonna find a couple examples in your own life because you're thinking about it. And then you're gonna notice it in others. So that's the why we don't want the volunteers to drag the kids around. And that's the most fundamental important piece of what's possible for growth in the program. All right, what else have we got here? Okay, this is, you probably separate into groups the way you do it. I know you line your skaters up this way and you do this fun sort of hello greet thing, right? What is it that you say? You do, you do, I can do it, I can skate, and I, and I, I heard that, it was really, really cute. And everybody's lined up and facing you, that's a really nice way to start. Well, you, yeah, you, you. Well, and a lot of times, uh, we do probably have five minutes of skating, kind of like a public skate, you know, as everybody's skating out there. And lots of our, and we don't wait for the volunteers at the door. The skater can skate on their own, or walker or on their own. They just go out there. We don't do that wait. They just, you know, go, go, go. And we don't have, in our advanced group, we probably have, who, 25 good skaters and maybe only five volunteers. And then when they're doing their routine, it's really mostly all of them. So that's kind of another just sort of, but you'll notice that, because I brought you videos of the show and I brought you the choreography sheets. So, coaching is an art. In order to perform it well, your coaching skills need to be nurtured and developed. You'll be influencing the lives of these skaters. They'll have the right attitude and outlook. You set the tone for the whole, the whole season. A good coach is positive, direct, uplifting, and inspirational, but also takes no prisoners. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, takes no baloney. You know, it keeps everybody on track. The master coach encourages, uplifts, and enables their students to achieve more than they ever thought person possible. And that's especially true for people with disabilities because of the stuff we talked about. And then the kids that come to you that have been physically challenged, I've had some skaters come to me at three, four, and five, and they've sometimes had 20 or 30 or 40 surgeries before that age. So most adults that they meet hurt them. They cut them, they stitch them, they poke them with needles. They, you know, so they have a normal fear. You know, it's not normal, but it's normal for them because of you know what they've gone through, a normal fear of new people. So that's that takes a little longer generally to break down and create trust that Gliding Stars is gonna be fun and nobody's gonna hurt you here and you know, it's okay if you cry. If a kid comes in really crying a lot, I'll see the parents don't let it bother you. It's not going to bother me at all. They'll figure it out eventually that it's, that it's, you know, fine and safe here. Empathy is an important quality to coach from. You understand it's been difficult. You understand the fear and mistrust. But we're going to do it anyway. We're going to go together as friends and we're like falling, like we're going to fall down anyway. And then we're going to get up. And we're going to fall down and we're going to get up. And then once the advanced group gets to know the polar bear slide, you know what that is, right? putting hands in front of you and something on your belly, and always want to teach them. And some of them will go at this speed to do it, and that's okay, but eventually you want them to move, because the true falling on ice happens what when we're moving. And you kind of need to know how to protect your head and slide on your hip, or you know, not take it on the elbow. You know? So all those are really important. So you acknowledge fear and just move on. You don't buckle in. So fear's a huge thing you know, to think about in yourself. You know, and in others, and to work people. And then I put some real stories in here that I won't go through now because we don't have time. But it, it's interesting to learn about, these are people, Krista started uh, screaming the whole first year. She wound up doing uh, solos eventually in Washington, D.C. with Seal and Christy Yamaguchi and Brian Guitano. She can do a loop, she can do a flip, she can do a toe loop, she can do South House, she can do seven or eight wall jumps in a row. She can do, she's a really good skater. She's beautiful and graceful to the music. And her family was told, never walk, never read. Well, especially, uh, she wasn't, no, I'm sorry, the other one was, was not walk. 
she was, they, was, they were told she'd never do math, she'd never read. She graduated with the National Honor Society designation from school, and she's in college right now. And so she was told all those things, and she'll say it was because of the discipline of skating. And you don't know it yet, but the discipline that you guys have gotten from skating, you know, and focusing on a goal will serve you very well through the rest of your life. So we're trying to give that to them in a slightly smaller thing. Her family can't even believe what happened. Her grandfather's a, a physician, and he's just, you know, he writes about it all the time. He can't believe, you know, where she started at age three screaming. You know, the whole first year she screamed. Every single week, skate, nonstop. I was like, just don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I'd actually like to teach her how to produce the ice shows. Because she's got that flair, and she writes stories, and she designs costumes for her ice shows. And she's come up with two of the themes. You know, we let our skaters submit themes. One of them submitted the next year that's coming. We're doing family night on ice and uh, family game night on ice. And we're doing Monopoly and you know, all these kind of fun, yeah, fun, really fun games. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. But it came from a kid, you know, like, OK. So and Morgan, another one, Spina Bifida. So you'll get a lot of reading those stories. But you have a hand skater long enough to know that. You know what I mean? So that's why I wanted to show you this is what's possible when you make that that tipping point shift, that very specific, what do they call it to start with? Turning. Tipping point, turning point, when you make that happen, and then you'll get a letter from somebody when you are 20 <laughs> or 25, and, you'll, and the kid will tell you, like, I'm in college, I did this, I did that. You know, I overcame my fears. It just makes us live better as, as human beings. So you'll get some of that. Um, I did talk about you know, cl class preparations and during class. And while we do that little piece, here's my first present for you. This is the beginner, intermediate, and advanced skills. And I wear these on my little thing, and out they come while I'm teaching. And I can go, oh, we haven't done our polar bear dive. OK, these are advanced. There's more advanced than anybody else, right? Oh, uh, we didn't do march in place. March moving, 10 steps. We forgot toes, no sky. These are things I've never seen in your ice shell. The only thing I saw was this ducking down thing, you know, pretty much, and the hands up. But the, all these, we incorporated the So you have these fun little clips, and then I'm making you a ton more um, because she, she has more of these little string things, but she didn't have, uh, and I need to give two, and then I'm going to get plus three more. I'm going to send you seven. Because what I'd like you to each identify is somebody good in your thing who could become like your teacher instructor, your teacher like an assistant, you know, like the beginning. Because the QETP, which we'll go into next, is hard to do as a teacher because you're keeping the class moving. So if we want to take the beginners and assess them and say, where are beginners at at the beginning of the year? Where, you know, what's our starting point? And we've got them all broken down, and that's kind of from my. 38 years of doing it, how the skills kind of group together. The kids may color outside of the lines on a few of them, but primarily you learn march in place and march moving and toes no sky, you know, at a similar time. So it's real, I found, even as a teacher, it's hard for me to be the, the like, got the little names on the list checking off what they can and can't do. And it's, if you teach somebody else to do that, you can be running the whole class. So let's say you have 20 beginners, right? Somebody's taking five of them and testing them. You're still teaching the 15. Then they give you those five back. They take the next five. And within a couple weeks, you'll get the, the, the testing done. But if you're trying to do it, it's really, really hard. And the big thing you'll notice as you read through the QETP is false is a false yes. So the concept is you really, really want to know what they're doing. Are they using the walker or not? That's just a checkbox, right? March in place, march moving. And all of these are described, weaving in and out of cones, which a lot of times we'll have um, our prop folks make props that relate to the things, and then they'll weave in and out, but not the volunteer holding them. The volunteers stand on the side, the skaters weave in and out, or they weave in and out after them, but it's obvious that the skaters doing it on their own. On their own. So a lot of these you can incorporate into your <laughs> which makes it a little more fun. And if somebody's doing like um, Monopoly, we might have the big game figures, the, like the figures that go around the board could be those props that they weave in and out of on that you know, particular routine. So we show all these different things, follow the leader, 
because that's that's attention, direction, uh, moving on the ice. Glide. The first one, the cones only, you know, 12 inches apart, and then it's three feet apart, one foot, three feet. Well, if they don't do it, you got to give them a no. So it's yes, no, or almost is 50%. So if on the three foot glide, you could tell they got to a foot and a half, but if you give them a Yes, when they didn't earn it, you can't show progress. This is a way that we can track all of our skaters. We have a computer system that this little helper can go in and put these names in, and we can print out reports for the families and the teachers with this whole system. And you can go in, my kids did this, plus it gives you a template for what you're working on next. It makes the lessons easier. And this little thing is like awesome, they have on your, your, your hip to do that. So these are all very, very well what time is it, Cindy? 9, 10? Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, my minutes. clock decided it's likes going fast. Yeah. So the beginner skills, which obviously we have, those are for each of you, are those basic things. Marching in place, march moving, toes, nose, sky. Touching our toes, touching our nose, reaching the sky. Touching our toes, touching our nose, reaching the sky. And that helps the body feel where it is in spades, proprioception. That's what you have in spades if you learn even how to do a waltz jump where your body is in space and time, you know, as you turn, we're trying to teach that. Plus that can be incorporated into, you know, a show routine as well. And usually the audience will scream it with the kids because we'll tell them, you know, have the MCs tell them on the microphone what they're saying. And it's fun for the audience. You know, they're, 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 they're learning how to balance, right? Toes, no sky. And some of the skaters learn to do that moving. Gliding across the ice, toes, no sky, toes, no sky. So that's one that's very fun. We begin our counts, follow the leader glide with the cones only one foot apart, and everybody gets three tries, right? So if they don't understand the directions, the volunteer helper that we're talking about, teacher can show them, hold your feet still, hold your feet still, you know, you gotta glide on them. And, and then the three feet, and then one second balance, one 100, one 100 on the other foot, and gliding on the right foot for six inches, gliding on the left foot for six inches. Those are the big beginner skills. Then, I don't think I have any more beginner. Yes, I do. Kick the ball, left foot, kick the ball, right foot. Do you guys have balls? Yes. Okay. So anybody that I watched on the video that's only skating on one foot should be doing kick the ball every week. Why? Because they're focusing on the ball. They're standing on that foot and kicking, and then you, you tell the volunteer they've got to kick with the other foot, right? Guess what? You stood on each foot if you're kicking the ball with <laughs> the right, and you're kicking the ball with the left. It's like fooling them into you know glide, standing on the leg that they don't like. Gliding around the cone, curving to the left, gliding around to the right, a snow plow stop, skating backward for three feet, and then this is your subjective thing. Paying attention to the instructor, following directions from the volunteer, and following directions from the instructor. And then you move into intermediate and advanced. So these are all written in here, plus you're gonna get more of those. When do you guys start skating? Next week. So you'll probably have those by the second week, would be my guess, not, not the first week. She ordered all the, this is what was, we didn't have the good um, thick paper, or maybe it was the plastic parts, but we had these and she didn't have, have these. So that will be really, really helpful for you. And then one of the big things about um, PIU, I call this PU, you need to be positive, inspiring, and uplifting. Everybody wants to be seen, to be heard, and to be valued. I'm on page 15. Um, as we focus on every uh, achievement, no matter how small, then those are the achievements that grow. When we focus on trying instead of can't, trying and effort grows. And when we consistently reward any positive behavior or effort, then that grows. So you guys should just be really bored with yourself by the time you're done saying, that was so great, good job, that was so great, you know what I mean? That, those kinds of things, you should be kind of like, you know, really over the top with that. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about the things that I've noticed over the years. There's a lot written about this in, um, in the pedagogy stuff, the stuff about the art and science of teaching. People do visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. So with Morgan, she's actually a really good skater, and we were working on um, just spina bifida, low, but really quite functional. And we were working on a bunny hop, and she was going to do a solo. And I explained it to her, and I put a toe in. So vis visually, I'm showing her. Auditorily, I'm telling her what it feels like that my toe's in. Kinesthetically, I'm down on my knees like sticking the toe in the ground, getting her to do it. I tried, like, I was just doing all the tricks I had you know, in my bag. And all of a sudden I said to her, you say it. 
toe step. You said toe step. And as soon as she said it, she did 10 in a row. So she had to see it, hear it, kinesthetically feel it, and then she had to say it as she was doing it. For some reason, that triggered, that auditory with her, triggered a new neural pathway in her head that made it happen. And then she did these funny hops. It was the weird. And so that was really interesting from my perspective going, all right, I tried all the tricks. I usually use all three. I'm usually talking to the skater, holding them. I'm down a lot. When somebody's only doing one foot, okay, you're good to be it. <laughs> you get to be a hero right now. So there was a couple little girls in the video that were bigger, and they were on a walker. One had dark hair. Do you know who I mean? Oh, I see. I mean. Yes, and one of them was moving two feet, and one was only a one foot. And then there was one nice blonde girl that was tall, taller than probably your size. And she was skating, holding the hand of somebody, but it was a constant one-footed skater. Do you know what I mean? Big girl, blonde hair. Kaylee. Is that Kaylee? No. Maybe Crystal. Crystal? Oh, Crystal. Crystal? Yeah. So I would put Crystal on a walker, right? And I would have somebody like you strong, you know, talking to her from here, right? So you're talking to her, keeping her busy. And then I would actually be down here grabbing the foot. And if all you girls, girls and boys are skaters, you're capable of doing this. You can just shoot the ducks and be all hunched up on the ice. So let's say the right foot's pushing, right? Okay, so she's doing this and moving along. And then as this foot goes down, I'm actually pulling this foot out. And it can be really, really hard. So if you push just one finger on the back of the knee, it forces the knee to bend, right? And then she steps. Okay, now she's doing her next step. Move it forward just a little as we go on. She's doing her next normal step, right? And stepping. Then this one doesn't want to step, so I'm pushing on the knee, pulling the foot up. Right? So your hands, I'm gonna have you do it with your hands. You probably don't assess how you walk, but this is how you walk. So put your hands out here in front of you. And now the right foot's there, the left foot's going back as the right foot's going forward. And that's really how you walk. And you learn to do that with your hands, then you're helping the patterning in their feet. I spend a lot of time upside down. It's one reason why in my 60s I'm still fit. <laughs> I'm upside down all the time doing that. And, and a lot of times, after a little while, is all you need to do, come back for a second. This is called a, um, um, a, it's a physical like trigger. So she's going along, 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 and then I'm reminding her, this leg, this leg, this leg, you know what I mean? This leg, but I want it to go back. This leg, see how stiff you are already, right? You, she's like, oh my God, what's she gonna do? Am I gonna face with her to the table, right? So you're stepping, and this was not stepping. So I'm just sort of pushing, or I'm going this way with the knee, you know what I mean? But once you learn that pattern with your feet, and you'll be teaching this to your volunteers again and again and again, I'm sorry, that's your problem with them and the other ones, you know, come in and out. But think in those terms, visual, kinesthetic, auditory, everybody's triggers are different. And then there's the intentionality, and I can tell you all have that already. The intention to help comes from our hearts. We want to help. We want to do a good job with our skaters, and people feel that intrinsically. Animals even feel it intrinsically, you know? And so those feelings that you walk into the rink with help set the tone, you know, for the whole pattern. But that expectation, you know, I get that, that carrot, you know, higher and higher. So what I brought you, which I will explain, there's our ice show that we did. And this was Skating the Colors of the Rainbow, which is a very fun theme. Which was really fun. Every routine was that color, and then in the end, we had them come out, and we have um, signboards for, for our sponsors around the show that you'll notice. But we also have stars. Like our volunteers come during the day, and they cover the boards with white paper and put stars, the five star, guiding stars. And then we did them in color so that the yellows knew they went to the yellow stars and the red. So when the audience was done, they saw the rainbow. All 300 skaters. Couldn't figure out how to do it. We're like, well, if the people who always make the stars blue, they're like, we have to make stars. Well, I'm like, yeah, but it'll be so cool. I'll just suck it up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it really was. It was probably the most beautiful finale we've ever had. And when you've done shows for 38 years in a row every year, it's hard to keep topping it. So what, what you'll notice is you're going to watch the show. This is the order. I'm sorry it didn't print fabulously. One program we can, we can spread around. But then these are blank choreography sheets for you to use. And we can send you this as a PDF as well, all right? And we'll give you a bunch of those. And then where's my choreography sheets that she ran off for me? These are just the blank ones. Here they are. Oh, this should be this. 
So flip this first page, this guy. And this is what the yellow groups look like. So this is our end. Like you guys would be over here, right? Well, our stars and volunteers seat here. So this is, yeah, so that might be the same for you, right? That's sort of your area. But obviously this PDF we could change to match. We store our props down here. But for example, you're going to the yellow page here, the first page of this one, right? And so here's where you enter. Here's like your little screen, right, that they all go through. It's cute if you have your props along that sort of area. This is a grand march. So that's everybody marches down the center, and then one person stands there, one goes right, one goes left, one goes right, one goes left. And here's where we do the first weaving in and out of cones. So you'll see that on the video, and then you'll be able to see what it looks like on a choreography sheet. And then after, now these are our beginners, so they've gone all the way down the ice, that's 200 feet. They've come back, almost the rest, but close to another 150 feet. Then they line up here, and then they do a connected line. I didn't see any of that. I watch a solid line, it's very powerful looking. A whole line, so the monitors comes up, and then they do what's called a fan turn. Sorry, I wanted the other first person to turn the second thing. And then they go, and then they fold into a circle, right? So the connective stuff, I want you to get a lot of ideas for the connective stuff, because that's what I saw was kind of weak. It's kind of like they did these, some of them did some cool tricks, they did these little pinwheels in the corner, but then it was a mess getting into whatever was next. So if you did, if I did pinwheels like I saw on yours and the five segments, right, I'd have single lines coming in, you know, somehow, and then I'd probably do a five or six spoke pinwheel, you know, from there, just the connective, the connectedness. And some of what you'll notice, this is the circle, and then after the circle, and I keep a book like this, so if anybody messes up on the ice, you know, it's, I can let one in and rescue anything. And then here's where the volunteers that I talked about leave their, skate their stars over to one blue line and then step all the way out to the other blue line, which is about, oh, maybe from here to the first table, and then each kid is called individually and does whatever their best trick is. Whether it's gliding on one foot, whether it's, you know, you know, doing a baby spiral on a walker or not, whatever it is. So these all match the video and the order of the program, and you'll see two and threes, and I do what's called small groups and small wars. You'll see, it, you'll see probably four or five. How many do I get this year? And then I usually get extra ice to practice for that, which I'll talk to Cindy about. If you identify in the fall a couple people that you think uh, high school hockey ends around February, where I live, and that probably happens here, and then we usually can get a couple hours, maybe just four weeks in a row from six to seven on a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night, that only the kids coming that do those solos practice, and it really helps. Yeah, the focused attention. So I had, uh, these two did a pair, Brittany and Cindy, uh, to the lady in red, and they got to pick their own music. It was really cute. Um, Ryan and Janine, he's a very severely autistic boy, and he did a solo with his mom. And it was really, really cute. And she could prompt him, you know, the foot up, and she's his volunteer. And it was the sweetest story, and he had so much fun, and he talked constantly more during the whole year. He's not that verbal. And he was like, are we going to the show again? Are we going to do it again? Are the people going to clap again? Are we? I mean, he just did. It was like an amazing thing with him. Alex May did it with her. Uh, he's the young boys in my advanced group. They're in yellow, and he skated to um, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. And he'd gone to see that performer, where the heck it is. And it meant so much to him, you know, to skate to that song. So, <laughs> when we pick solos, we say, this is your theme, it's family game night. So these are the ones we're using for groups, but you can pick any game that's meaningful to you and we'll make that costume, you know, the music. So these guys all picked their music and got to really have a lot of personalization with their routine. And then Lucas Gazzino wanted to um, skate to Kermit in Green. Now he's an artistic the way to see him skate. He's, uh, he's, he's got waltz jumps, but amazing lunges and spirals and, and could memorize the whole thing all by himself. And every week he got better and better and better. I would show him something and he would just do it. I showed him something doing his backward skating and all of a sudden he was doing the change on backward all of a sudden. I'm like, love it, do it, put it in there. <laughs> and we taught him on the other foot. Like, I mean, it, 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 a kid with that kind of control like doing that just blew the doors off the place. So that was, you know, that's possible. 
people. You've got skaters who can do some of this stuff. You really, really do. And you know, we just need to get the volunteers to work in harmony with you. And there's probably more than a dozen skaters in your program that need to get put back on walkers and off people's hands. And even when they're on the walker, I saw some volunteers behind me. They don't need to do that. They can just walk along, skate alongside talking to them. The family would rather see them skating themselves. Wouldn't you? You know? So the volunteers need this training as much. So those are, you'll notice this matches. Plus, I'm going to give you my cell number. You guys text, right? Text me questions. I text, I learned. I've been doing the texting generation, right? <laughs> but you know, like, this and this and this happened, you can send these little videos on your phone, right? And then once, if you just have a couple things that, you know, you're puzzled by, I can help you with that, and then you'll go, oh yeah, because then the next thing that happens, you have that in your head that you know another way, right? So it's really easy for you to do that with me. So somewhere on this stuff, write down my, my cell number. It's 716, use that one, 982-7383. 716-982-7383. Seven three eight three, and I have unlimited texting. And then, if it's complex, you know, if you're sending me a complex, we'll make a phone date. Like, how about, you know, I'm on the ice till six thirty today. How about six forty five? You know what I mean? And I can talk to you on my Bluetooth in my car on the way home. Because parents will call me about skates and fitting, and they want something for some boy, you know, over in whatever Boston. And I, and that's a little more of a complicated. That's an easier conversation than us texting until our thumbs, you know, fall off. So I'd be happy to help. Yeah. And, stuff like that, you know, that you get into now. That we got to get into questions before they start showing up from fitting. Oh, I just opened them up. <laughs> With tons of information. So, do you like this idea? I love it. It's really helpful to, to yeah. right? And do you like the idea of looking at other choreography so you can start okay. some ideas? Yes. That would be a yes. Okay. All right, let's do two little things standing up for a minute then. Come here. One of the things that I noticed on the pinwheels was that the number was not even. So if I have, uh, you three all go one way, holding hands, you know, like facing one way, right? And I'm gonna go the other way, come on over here, right? Give me your hand. And you're going on a pinwheel. It's totally unbalanced, right? Yeah. So sometimes I looked at it and I'm counting on the screen going, there's kind of on one side and four on the other. Dude, six and six, you know what I mean? Like seven and seven. And it does, you know, and so that's huge. And the other thing I noticed a lot uh, was these ones where you did, oh, this is the way, and then we're going to do something different, where you did this kind of pivoting, right? But the volunteers didn't stay out long enough, and it got all squiggly, right? And so making the line shorter works better. And I saw a couple videos like that, and I thought if they, if there was a huge force spoke in some routine. So my thought would be, okay, make two force spokes, right? So the most you've got is seven, you know, to ten on a spoke, right? Or even five to seven, and have one rotate that way, and one rotate that way, and they almost, and then as they get better, you can put them a little closer together, it's like the gears. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. We've done it in advance where they actually intersected. Whereas one went around, you know, they would time it, and I would see you coming around, and I would know that I had to be in front of you. My line had to go and cross, and then your line had to go, and then your line had to go. But there is one thing, hold hands again, that's very interesting, that's a Native American dance that I snarfed one year. So you start heading in um, that way, go all the way in really tight. So you're making like a spiral, come into the center, tighter, 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 we follow you. And then once it's really, really tight, you take a sharp turn that way, and pull out, opposite. So this is what it looks like. And it's, the audience will go, will gasp. They will love this. They will just gasp at you. And we were doing a Native American thing, so I went to the Native American magnet school and asked for some ideas. So it looks like this. you got this line going, and then somebody starts to bring it in. This will be one of your longer lines. And it looks like this. And then it goes back out. Oh, that's really cool. It's gorgeous. Because you got to think, the audience is sitting above your skaters. So they see the patterns, right? So when you have a really big pinwheel, 
you know, some of your bigger routines. How many routines do each of your skaters do? Three each. Other skater has three. Three each. Yes. Right. And that makes the the show about as long as you like. So then you probably wouldn't want to get tough. Because they're only two minutes each. Now you'll notice my yellow routine is the big skaters, the big one. My kids do one each. But I have three hundred skaters. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And then and then the solos. But the advanced, you'll notice it's four or five minutes long. The beginner is seven minutes long, the routine. So they're out there for a long time. But they're doing the cones, they're doing toes no sky when they're in the circle. They're doing oh hello goodbye. This is the other thing. Have you ever done hello goodbye circles? Oh, so you're in a big circle, stretch way back. You skate in, bend over, yell, hello! We go backwards, you'll go by, I don't care if it's like these all makes everybody go hello! Skating forward, skating backward, but that, but you make a U circle. And then when I'm practicing circles, this is just corny. But I do you say, oh, that hit one, and I'll tell them about the kids. See if there's any money in that volunteer's pocket. Get some money. You know what I mean? And then they're following the right way instead of the. And then if it looks really pink, I'm like, we look like a smush banana. Let's look like a sun. Think orange. Think sun. You know, you make these silly things up. And then we always reverse and go the other way. Because that's yes, a, like that. Walking. You know, I'm serious. I'm serious. They make, they make a game out of it. You know, like follow. And then the walkers. Give me a walker for a second. I don't think you do. One of the big, big things with the walkers in a circle. This just makes the circle. And you'll notice our circles are really round. I'm on the walker. We're going around. You have to grab the center of the bar. Only way the circle tricks. And then you're holding okay. my shirt. And I have the first hold. So skate. See, it's a circle. So, it's not a lumpy couch. Ooh. I like this. It's beautiful. And here's the red shirt. Mm -hmm. And okay. you hold a piece of clothing. And then right work down down here. Here. you're holding that. Um, you're talking me. Yeah. Simple. Recolor. A little text. Why isn't my circle Thanks. working? There's a little picture. Right? I would have just like that. Green. Right? But these things. Cool. You know, it is so much more fun for you. Okay. Same thing's true for a sling. You got to hold here. And here, oh, the same thing works on those. But I always say just, you know, grab the back of the jacket, grab the back of the clothing. And then the, um, I will show you the pinwheels and you tissue even. And then when you have really a lot in one of your eyes, you don't need a six figure. Because right? the thing that was cool about it is if the lines are straight, and I always train everybody to look in. So if you're my center and I'm on this, I'm teaching people, look to the middle and you know, stay in line with them. Oh, I don't want to kind of yeah. yeah. so I, I don't know. Put them in the middle of the